ABCnow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're broadcasting from Madrid, Spain for the next week during the UN Climate Summit. In a historic step, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has instructed the chairs of key House committees to begin drafting articles of impeachment against President Trump. Pelosi said Trump's actions to seek foreign help in the 2020 election strikes at the very heart of the Constitution. Our democracy is what is at stake. There's no choice but to act because he is trying to corrupt once again the election for his own benefit. The president has engaged in abuse of power, undermining our national security and jeopardizing the integrity of our elections. His actions are in defiance of the vision of our founders and the oath of office that he takes to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's announcement sets the stage for a full House vote on impeachment that could take place before Christmas. Hours after making her announcement, Pelosi was asked by a reporter at a news conference if she hates President Trump. This is about the Constitution of the United States and the facts that lead to the president's violation of his oath of office. And as a Catholic, I resent your using the word hate in a sentence that addresses me. I don't hate anyone. I was raised in a way that is full, a heart full of love and always prayed for the president. And I still pray for the president. I pray for the president all the time. So don't mess with me when it comes to words like that. House Speaker Pelosi's actions come as the House Judiciary Committee says it will convene another hearing Monday to allow lawyers to formally present evidence in the impeachment inquiry, which centers on how President Trump withheld military aid to Ukraine in order to pressure the Ukrainian president to investigate Trump's political rival, Joe Biden, and his son, Hunter. Presidential candidate and former Vice President Joe Biden lashed out at a town hall in Iowa Thursday after an audience member suggested Biden helped his son Hunter get a lucrative job in Ukraine. Hunter Biden had been on the board of Ukrainian gas company Burisma, and the Republicans have been spreading debunked conspiracy theories about Hunter's position. This is a retired farmer from Iowa. But you, on the other hand, sent your son over there to get a job and work for a gas company that he had no experience with gas or nothing in order to get access for the public to for the president so you're you're selling access to the president just like he was so you got damn liar man that's not true and no one has ever said that no one has ever said that i see it on the tv you see it on the tv no i know you do and by the way that's why I, i'm not sitting there i don't like it up in you and that was former Vice President Joe Biden lashing out at the town hall in Iowa Thursday. The Pentagon's considering sending thousands more troops to the Middle East to counter Iran. The Wall Street Journal reports up to 14,000 more U.S. troops could be deployed. The potential deployment comes as the United States claims Iran has transferred short-range missiles into Iraq. Saudi Arabia has taken the world's most profitable company public. The state-owned oil giant Saudi Aramco raised a record $25.6 billion in its initial public offering. When trading begins, the company will be valued at $1.7 trillion, making it the most valuable listed company in the world. More than 140,000 people around the world died from measles last year. Amidst a surge in the number of cases of the preventable disease partially caused by misinformation about vaccines, the vast majority of the victims were children under the age of five. The new figures come as the Pacific Island nation of Samoa has arrested an anti-vaccination campaigner amidst a massive outbreak of measles that's already killed over 60 people, mostly young children. At least 62 people have died after a boat capsized in the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of the West African nation of Mauritania. The boat was headed to Spain's Canary Islands. It was carrying over 150 refugees when it ran out of fuel and sank on Wednesday. A shocking video obtained by ProPublica shows the last hours of the life of the 16-year-old indigenous Guatemalan asylum seeker Carlos Gregorio Hernandez Vasquez. He was found dead by his cellmate, 
in a Texas Border Patrol holding cell in May. A warning to our viewers, this footage is disturbing. Hernandez Vasquez has been diagnosed with the flu and a fever of 103 degrees when he was put in the holding cell with another sick boy. A nurse recommended he be sent to the emergency room if his conditions worsened. Instead, Border Patrol left him in a cold cement quarantine in a pool of blood next to the toilet. An agent checked on Hernandez Velasquez three times while the boy was dying. But for Publica reports, the Customs and Border Protection agent failed to perform adequate checks on the boy and never reported anything alarming with the boy's health status. The video also shows that CBP lied about how the boy's body was found. In France, hundreds of thousands of workers are continuing their strike today in protest of French President Emmanuel Macron's proposed pension plan. Over 800,000 people poured into the streets Thursday as the strike's first day shuttered schools across the country and canceled hundreds of trains and flights. This is French pensioner, former construction worker, Michel Laurent. Today I demonstrate for the next generation because when you see that we have worked all our lives, I've worked 43 years, I have a 1,200 euros pension. I doubt that younger people will have a pension like we currently have. If they want it, they will have to work until they are 70 years old. It is untenable. Uber says it's received over 3,000 reports of sexual assault in the United States last year. The Wall Street-backed ride-hailing app has repeatedly been criticized for not taking passenger safety seriously and for ignoring reports of rape and sexual assault by its drivers. Regulators in London have refused to renew Uber's license to operate in the city, citing several breaches that place passengers and their safety at risk. Uber can still operate in London while it appeals the decision. The Guardian reveals Congresswoman Ilhan Omar of Minnesota and Rashida Tlaib of Michigan were targeted by a mysterious Israeli-based Facebook group and a far-right campaign to spread misinformation and Islamophobia. To leave are the first two Muslim women to serve in Congress. They've been subject to racist insults from President Trump and Islamophobic rants from Trump supporters and other political.